Good morning from MWC 2025. I'm here together with Roque Lozano, Senior Vice President of Network Infrastructure for Middle East and Africa at Nokia. Hello, Roque. Nice Hello. to meet you. Hello. Very nice to meet you. What's Nokia showcasing at MWC this year in Barcelona? Wow. How many hours do you give me to answer <laughs> that? We have plenty okay. of time. <laughs> Let me put it in a very simple way. We are showcasing what we consider is the biggest opportunity for humanity, which is the opportunities opened by artificial intelligence. Yeah. So as a network solution provider, we stream, we, we divide in two streams. Mm -hmm. First, how we, how we prepare our network for AI mm -hmm. and how we can use AI to prepare our network for AI. <laughs> That's exactly what we say, we we'll try to showcase uh -huh. here in a, in a very humble but meaningful setup. Yeah. Okay? So as Nokia as a, whole, as a whole provider of communication, we have the mobile part, we have the core and network solution part from our colleagues from Mobile Network and CNS. But in particular for network infrastructure, we focus in two particular things. Yeah. First one, our portfolio on fixed wireless actors that you can see on that side, very crowded yeah. as you can see, where we see all the new devices to connect the homes and the working sites uh -huh. through the fixed wireless access, through the 5G or the 4G backhaul, or through the fiber to the home. Yeah. Just to make sure that the user experience at your home, at your office, in your desk, or in the move, in the, yeah. in the coffee shop, or wherever you pause, is exactly the same that you will have in your office. Mm -hmm. This is a very interesting set of advance that is not allowing only to have the best connectivity possible, but the maximum monetization yeah. of that connectivity, yeah. which is very, very important. In addition to that, we have as well the rest of the network very much simulated in that small area in which you see how the connectivity that we require, artificial intelligence yeah. required inside the data center yeah. is extended beyond the data centers and beyond the data center network yeah. to reach the edge, the access at the end, the premises where these users or devices are. Mm -hmm. We believe that this is the holistic solution, is the only way to maximize the use of the artificial intelligence capabilities mm -hmm that in one way or another is the big enabler of the modernization of every human activity. Or at home, private, yeah. domestic, or professional in the industries and in enterprises. So when you mention AI, so from, from what I hear, it's also kind of accelerator throughout your whole product line. Absolutely. First, AI is a magic tool. Yeah. I was discussing with one colleague when we started to use calculator. You are very young, you don't understand this, but I remember when the first calculator arrived and we started to use. So the AI is a super calculator yeah. that is not only doing mathematical operations, yeah. it's doing every single thing. Yeah. So I, I like to visualize AI as a kind of a, a, as a movie. You yeah. can generate all the movies. And then you can use that movies to teach someone else. Yeah. So it's a kind of a knowledge, knowledge yeah, trading, yeah. Or knowledge sharing. So you can access to all the knowledge of the industry to improve a, a process, to mm -hmm. reduce the time to market, to yeah. maximize the first time right. You can do all, everything what the human knowledge can do. That could be put in a cloud services. And this is the beauty. And this is why we and I has a so <laughs> a stress life today. Yeah. Because we see that all of that knowledge, which is applicable to any human activity, yeah. is at the very end transported in an IP service, yeah. which is living in hyperconnected data center, but which is reaching the user through an hyperconnected city, an yeah. hyperconnected site. And all of that connectivity is what we try to maximize, not only the performance, the security, minimizing the latency and the bandwidth, but as well make it as much as possible the monetization from the day one. Mm -hmm. And this is the challenge, that's why we get younger in yeah, this industry, yeah. because we have to reinvent ourselves completely. Yeah. So, so we can summarize, AI really can help to unblock immense potential Absolutely. in a lot of markets. Absolutely. Which brings me to my next point. When we look at broadband for everyone, so how is Nokia, let's say, working on making this a reality, especially for underserved areas, or we look at the African okay. continent in total. So this tremendous opportunity that yeah. AI could be a tremendous opportunity, but could increase the yeah. gap of yeah. the digital gap as well tremendously. Yeah. So we, and I think that we discussed it the last year, yeah. we believe that this digital gap is the digital opportunity. Yeah. And if we want to have a green future, a sustainable yeah. future, 
we don't need to be uh, only digital, but definitely digital is the big tool to be yeah. sustainable and be inclusive. Yeah. So we have cases in the underserved areas, yeah. and I will not say not only in the low income segment, yeah. even in the high income segment that they cannot afford the connectivity that artificial intelligence requires yeah. to improve that capability. And or, not, that, that or not receiving connectivity at all. Exactly. Exactly, but even in the business district, in the technical part of the most sophisticated yeah. metropolis in our region, the demand of this latency and security that artificial intelligence requires for very critical mission things uh -huh. still is not at the level. Yeah. So yeah. again, the enterprise who managed to have the premium connectivity uh, to yeah. the artificial intelligence services is going to have a premium uh, competitive advantage mm -hmm. in the marketplace. So it can boost the critical infrastructure as well. If we Everywhere. Prepared. So any digital service will be limited by the quality of the connectivity yeah. which is supporting yeah. it. You cannot have a premium yeah. digital service or any type of service yeah. if you don't have a equally premium connectivity to support that yeah. SLA, that yeah. demand of the traffic, that demand of the connectivity stability, yeah. size, and privacy that these digital services require. Yeah. Interesting. So what's next in five band fixed wireless access to accelerate the connectivity in Africa? So we believe that the fixed wireless access is perhaps the most advanced use case and the most popular use case of the 5G today. Mm. Because of the time to market to give uh, world-class broadband services to the places yeah. is, is uh, almost, I will not say the click, okay, but very, very close. You don't need to wait for the complicated deployment of fiber that we believe is the best. So yeah. fiber will provide the infinite uh, solutions at the very end. At least a stable But you one. need time and uh, stability. Yeah. But you need time. Yeah. You cannot deploy the cost of deploying the fiber is, is big. And you cannot deploy fiber only because you have uh, tens of users here and there. Yeah. So you need a critical mass. Yeah. And the you cannot wireless. deploy it where you have no geographical let's say, exactly. opportunities to exactly. do so. So the field wireless access is a very perfect complement to anticipate until you have a critical mass of, of users in a particular area where you can apply the, the fiber in the most economical point. Yeah. Everything is possible with time and money, but we all have a lot of things to do with that money. <laughs> so it's more about the symbiosis of both. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a time to market looking for the uh, fiber to the most economical point in the most, economic, in the most appropriate time. Yeah. Okay. yeah, sounds good, sounds good, interesting. So with AI and cloud growth, how is Nokia transforming the data center environment connectivity to support okay. this, let's say, so prosperous future in Africa with AI? Okay, there are multiple domains there. One of the domains that I believe it are more meaningful, and we launched last year the new solution that we call EDA, the event-driven automation yeah. platform, is that we're not only trying to improve the connectivity inside the data center, what yeah. we call the data center fabric, yeah. with the next generation of, of switches, with next generation of, of microchips, but as well, again, with the automation of that connectivity, to make sure that the software developers who are thinking in the monetization or in the yeah. use of that data center, they are not limited by the complexity of the communication. Think that in a data center, it's not only the power equivalent to the city that yeah. that data center is serviced. Even the network inside is perhaps bigger in number of switches than the metro network in number of routers. So the complexity is huge. Yeah. If you cannot simplify, abstract all of that one for the use, yeah. you will limit, the, you will limit the, the benefit of that. So this is on one side. Best fabric possible, automated to uh, simplify or to uh, enable the, any, any, any use of it. But in addition, all the investment that you have in data centers yeah. will not be useful if you don't connect those data centers in between them. Yeah. And if you don't connect those data centers to the user. The some of them will be very far, some of them has to be closer. Yeah. So one of the things that we can show here and we are making a lot of effort is how this, this, let me put it in this concept, okay? How we can extend the fabric of the data center, which is connecting all the CPUs, all the GPUs mm -hmm. inside and the memories, everything which is inside, how that fabric can be extended beyond the data center, mm -hmm. through the edge, to the access, to the premises, mm -hmm. and still be as stable as the fabric is in the data center. Mm -hmm. The data center is a contained environment, yeah, absolutely yeah. under the control. You put air conditioning, you close, it's yeah, safe. Yeah. That connectivity is a challenge for the volume. 
but you have to get that connectivity across the entire network. And then there is not anymore a lock, it's the streets, yeah. it's the jungle, it's the yeah. desert. Yeah. You have to pass all of that connectivity until you reach the user premises or even the user desk when you operate a crane, a SAP application or any type of process in the industry. So this is what we are trying to do, make sure that you don't lose mm -hmm. the strength of that connectivity in any of the steps, okay? So it's more like to rethink data center architecture environments? Yes, I will say that we have seen submarine networks, yeah. terrestrial networks, yeah. data center, metro network, yeah. access network. We believe that the artificial intelligence requirement, a holistic view, and yeah. that's why we call it the fabric, yeah. the cloud fabric or the artificial intelligence fabric to connect all the elements who are not only to generate that artificial intelligence, but to make that artificial intelligence used by the user, sustainable by the operator, affordable in, all, in other words, but mainly to make sure that you can interact with that artificial intelligence. And I was just having the temptation of saying click and consume. With artificial intelligence, you will not need neither to click. It will be a natural interaction, a natural yeah. language in your gesture. Okay? So that, imagine the demand or real-time reply, preparation of the network, resuffling, resuffling of all the connectivity to provide that flow of information in the blink of an eye. Yeah, I understand. Okay. So you mentioned earlier that Nokia's strength as well lays in automation software driven solutions. So how can these kinds of solutions improve broadband and data center efficiency, particularly in African markets, emerging markets? Okay, definitely it's applicable to everyone or every, every type of market. In the particular case of, of Africa, make a two bigger, because first is the size, the geography of Africa is huge. Mm. The, 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 the efficiency that you can get by having the first time right deployment and yeah. first time right provisioning, yeah. uh, whatever there is a cable uh, issue in any, in any part of the network, you can identify, you can protect the traffic automatically yeah. before yeah. it's happening. If you need to do the maintenance session, you can understand how it's going to be affected the SLA yeah. and prepare the network before. That will be a, a huge yeah. advantage. But again, the most important for, for me is that the people can trust the connectivity. Uh, if you are going to be using artificial intelligence for your activity, yeah. you cannot be lucky to be connected yeah, sometimes yeah. and no lucky yeah. and not be connected another time. Yeah. So, that so you is need a reliable service. A reliable service. You need to trust the connectivity. Yeah. As you trust that when you open the tap, it's going to yeah. be water, yeah. or when you plug your, your computer, yeah. you're going to have power. Yeah. This is exactly yeah. that. And this is what we try to, to cover, that holistic approach. If you ask me, and I am a little bit more aggressive than that, I will say our aim is to have autonomous network. Mm. But this autonomous network is a journey. Okay, so we work in very practical approach, yeah. having the, the experience. We Nokia, we are a multi-vendor yeah. company. We have integrated many logos. Recently, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have acquired Infinera. Yeah, yeah. That is definitely a boost of our optical capability of innovation yeah. that will bring us a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of facilities to have yeah. a more agile and more capable yeah. op optical network inside yeah. and outside the data center. But at, at the end of the day, what we try to say is that we have to consider not only the capacity, not yes. only the latency, not only all the KPIs, but it's how you can use it. Yeah. And this one, the automation is fundamental in mm. You cannot react in time. Yeah. You should be automated. So it builds the foundation of everything. Build the foundation of everything because that connectivity is going to change yeah. from one place to another one and the user should not realize that. Yeah. They need a content from one data center or a processing in another data center and the connectivity is the same. And for them, the interaction, again, will not be neither anymore a click, will be just perhaps a gesture, perhaps just a situation in which at that time he needs to have more information in one way than another. And the, all the traffic engineering should be adapted to this new use case. So where do you see the biggest opportunity for broadband and data center connectivity? Oh, the biggest opportunity is everywhere. Again, the digital gap is a digital opportunity. There is so many, um, so many areas in which the connectivity can make a difference because the artificial intelligence can improve any type of activity, any yeah. type of process, yeah, yeah, from go-to-market to efficiency on the operation, <laughs> from a shoemaker yeah. to a school to yeah. the e-government's application. It's just endless scalability. It's, it's, again, it's the knowledge of the human. It's the knowledge of the human would get in these applications in IP services. 
Perfect. It was very interesting. Thanks for your time, Rookie. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Our pleasure. Thank you. There was Tech African News from MWC 2025. You can find more on techafricanews.com.